start. Uh, so our next speaker is Yu Chao Wu, and she's going to tell us about non-Archimedean methods and case stability. Great, thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Um, so uh, before I start, let me uh, briefly explain the title of my talk uh, a little bit, and I'll get into the story. Um, so case stability is uh, some purely algebraic geometric notion uh, that governs uh, on the other hand, the, the existence of certain canonical metrics um, in the world of complex manifolds. Um, and this is a subject that has been extensively studied over the last decade or so, uh, and more maybe over the last five years. And so uh, hopefully I'll be able to cover one specific aspect of it, uh, but not certainly not all of the, of, of the story. And uh, Narik Median, uh, we've been hearing a lot about NARC media and analog spaces this afternoon, but uh, the focus that I'm going to take in is uh, the NARC media field I'm going to work with is the complex numbers uh, equipped with an unusual norm uh, called the trivial norm. So what trivial norm does is uh, it still takes zero for um, zero, but for any non-zero number, in the complex number, uh, it has more than one. Um, so this is uh, not the same as the usual Euclidean norm. And um, on this Narek medium field, I'm going to consider uh, the Berkowitz angle theory and Linux spaces, which uh, has the advantage of um, having nicer topologies. And um, for most of the time, uh, we'll be doing analysis on Berkowitz spaces um, instead of algebra. All right, so um, the whole, sto whole story starts from the study of canonical metrics and differential geometry. Um, there has been classical theorems like the uniformization theorem in complex analysis, and also uh, the classical uh, space forms in, in Riemannian geometry, which classifies the, the uh, all complete Riemannian manifolds with constant sectional curvature. Now, if you relax the condition to uh, reach a curvature, there are a whole lot of questions you can ask, and a lot of these are not very well understood. Um, so on the differential geometry side, um, there is a particular metric uh, studied by Einstein. I figured this is the best place to talk about Einstein metrics. Um, this is a Riemannian metric with the condition that the, the Ricci tensor is proportional to uh, the curvature tensor, which in particular has constant Ricci curvature. Um, so I'll try to give you uh, some examples uh, in which cases Einstein metrics play an important role in understanding the geometry or the algebra uh, of the geometric object. So the first example is P2 equipped with the Fubini CD metric. And this is one instance of uh, Kähler Einstein metric. Um, and if you take uh, the affine cone over P2 um, and you take the flat metric on it, this is the usual flat metric, then this is a particular case of uh, clavial, uh, in other words, Ricci flat Kähler. And it's also a cone metric in the sense that there's an underlying Riemannian structure. Um, so the, the underlying Riemannian structure is an odd-dimensional real manifold, uh, in this case being S5, um, to the round metric. Um, so the code, it's a cone in the sense that this metric in polar coordinates is really a metric cone over S5. So in polar coordinates, you can write down something like this. Um, and this S5 I'm writing down is um, a special case of of the so-called Sasaki Einstein metric. So the Sasaki structure is a structure, uh, contact structure on odd dimensional real manifolds and uh, somewhat similar to Kähler. By definition, it means that the metric cone is Kähler. All right, so uh, the study of uh, all sorts of Einstein metrics have been of interest because it's known that, for example, on final varieties, uh, they do not always admit a Kähler Einstein metric. And a typical example would be, um, call it B. Um, this is P2 below the pen point. This does not admit 
a Taylor Einstein trick. But um, if you're willing to take the affine cone over it, um, X, affine cone with the anti canonical embedding, uh, algebraically just do the spec of uh, the section ring, then um, in this case, this is a clavial cone. Um, in the sense that the corresponding Sasaki Einstein structure will be given by uh, a canonically embedded R equals one level set. Uh, just like here, if you take R equals one, you can uh, get the unit sphere. So um, this topologically is S2 cross S3. And this one has uh, a so-called irregular uh, Sasaki Einstein metric that's compatible with the co metric. So uh, the interesting uh, situation here is that you, you have some more transcendental uh, nature in the, the study of Sasaki Einstein metrics because you need to incorporate those um, po irrational polarizations that are not necessarily coming from a line bundle on some projective variety. Um, so if you're a differential geometer, that's uh, some one dimensional transcendental foliation where the leaf space is not a manifold or anything. All right, so um, what does this have to do with the algebraic theory of, of case topology? Uh, this often goes under the name of Yelty and Donaldson conjecture, and by far it's completely understood for final varieties, uh, even for the singular ones. And this is governed by the notion of case topology. And there, roughly speaking, um, case topology is defined by testing a so called Futaki invariant on the space of test configurations, which I'll denote by T. Um, and these test configurations are, um, let's say, um, V, uh, final, or uh, isotrivial degenerations of the original variety V over A1, um, equivalent with a GM action. Uh, in some sense, it's an isotrivial degeneration, but it's also a, a polarized one. Um, and then you can define some Futaki invariant on each of those test configurations, essentially given by intersection numbers. Um, and case doubly is de defined by demanding Futaki invariant to be not negative or positive, depending on the, the, the actual definition you're looking at uh, on the space of test configurations. Now, from the point of view of birational geometers, uh, people want to classify objects by looking at uh, looking for minimal objects. And so, uh, a simple theorem, and in fact, the crucial theorem in understanding the case stability theorem for final varieties is um, this equivalence established by the entry um, that you don't have to test all test configurations. Um, so, it's equivalent to test sort of a minimal class of test configurations called special test configurations. Um, and, and this uses uh, the minimal model program. Um, now, um, what connects uh, case stability and the existence of, of Taylor Einstein metrics on Thanos is this Yalkin Donaldson conjecture, now a theorem due to the work of uh, many people over uh, the last five years or so. And um, one part that connects uh, the analytic story to the algebraic story is an Archimedean formulation. Um, so the idea is that here you have um, a variational characterization of the Taylor Einstein metrics as the minimizer of certain energy functional uh, F on the space of metrics uh, in a fixed Taylor class to R. Um, so that um, the existence of metrics is equivalent to finding a minimizer of this energy functional. Um, now, you, this is an infinite dimensional uh, Riemannian manifold, essentially, of, as observed by Donaldson. And at infinity, you'll find yourself uh, end up in non-Archimedean objects, uh, which are precisely metrics, non-Archimedean metrics on uh, line bundle possibly take the Berkowitz amplification. Um, and you can, there's a way to identify these 
metrics with the space of test configurations, and you can also have a modified Futaki invariant um, to get an arc medium version of the of, of the original arc medium functional. Um, now this is, gives you a, a non arc median variational characterization of the algebraic case stability, and it turns out that. Um, it, it, ha, it connects back to the complex analytic world in a very nice way, um, thanks to the work of um, Boksum Hizmoto Yangsen and uh, Berman Boksum Yangsen. So, uh, this is the story about final varieties. And uh, what I've been thinking about is more on the local setting. And it turns out that there is a local case stability uh, in this setting as well, except that. There are two problems. One is that if you're working with the affine cone, then you're getting out of the world of um, proper compact spaces. And two, the Futaki invariant in this local setting is not completely algebraic. Um, so it, it makes it harder to study uh, local case stability from the algebra geometric point of view. Um, so instead, I was looking for a generic median characterization. Um, and the key idea sort of comes from this uh, geometric Riemannian structure. So instead of considering metrics on the line bundle, you want to consider uh, Narek medium metrics on um, a so called Narek medium link, which essentially gets the, the same definition as in the analytic case, uh, except that you, you need to interpret it this a little bit differently. But as an analytic, non median analytic space that sits inside the Birkwich annotation uh, as a compact subset. And so um, instead of doing the algebraic intersection theory, you can sort of do it in an analytic way um, and get uh, some sort of non median characterization uh, like so. And uh, I think I'll end with a theorem, uh, which is analog of the Slashew's theorem in the global case, but was previously not known, um, and does not use the minimal model program. Uh, so the theorem is that to test local consensus stability, uh, it's equivalent to test those special test configurations. So it's the same as for talking about being negative on all special test configurations. All right, this all stop here. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Questions? Is it easy to explain why D2 at a point doesn't have a Keeler Einstein metric? Yeah, there um, um, there is kind of various obstructions. There are some like topological or uh, group theory obstruction to this. So uh, it's a necessary condition that uh, if you have a Kähler Einstein metric, then the automorphism group has to be reductive, and and P two belong at the point has a non reductive group. That that was one of the the first obstructions known. Easy to say with special test configuration is. Yeah, essentially, uh, uh, you don't want to leave the world of varieties. The central fiber is, again, a KLT variety. Under the isomorphism, you get like spatial I mean, did you say H at not uh, This one? Yeah. There are interpretation. Um, yeah, I think this corresponds essentially corresponds to. Well, there's no uh, precise uh, statement about that because um, this one cares more about the the. It doesn't care that much about the special test configurations, but uh, I think one way to think about this is that uh, these are essentially metrics defined by a single valuation. Thank you so much. That corresponds to the, the central fiber. The, the, the central fiber uh, induces an evaluation of the test configuration that restricts back to evaluation on variety. Right. 
I mean, as the construction to go from H and A to T, just like you take the filtration that you get from. Yeah, I do the base construction. Uh, All right. Thank you very much.